So then you continue. Uh, with regard to this, it is written for you um, for you rebel against my edict. Um, for for the reason I will uh, for for the reason I will explain. Right. So I think it's uh, Rambam is talking. I will explain. Moshe was uh, not uh, speaking with the mass uh, with the mass of common people, but rather with individuals on a high spiritual level. How did you say? that the lowest of their women was on the level of the prophets of Yeheskel, the son of Buzi. And they would evaluate everything Moshe said and or did. When they saw that he became angry, knowing that he was not among those who, uh, whose emotional qualities were impaired, they assumed that God had uh, already uh, become enraged against them for asking for war. And, uh, there, uh, and that they already um, incurred God's rage. For otherwise, Moshe would not have uh, become angry. Uh, this was not the case. God did not show uh, the either anger or rage when speaking with him. He merely said, take the staff and uh, give war to the congregation uh, in their flocks. Since Moshe created, uh, created a mistaken impression, of God's uh, God's will, it was considered sin. That's a uh, amazing explanation, very very unusual explanation, and we're going to read this part and explain line by line. Very interesting. So it says, with regard to this, it is written, uh, "You uh, you rebelled against my edict." Okay, that's what Hashem said. So you you mean in uh, you mean in uh, Moshe and Aaron. For this reason, I will explain. So Rambam is saying, right? So, so Hashem said, "You rebel against my edict." Okay. Um, edict meaning uh, the, just, just to jump, jump to, to them. Hashem was not angry, right? So, and people lo look at uh, at um, uh, Moshe and his selflessness, right? Uh, it says like, uh, uh, yes, who who wrote its f f f famous question? Who wrote the Torah? Moshe, so, so it's not God, it's Moshe, no, no, um, right, so it's Moshe, yeah, it is Moshe who wrote the Torah, but he was like a, like a, like, like a pen, right, or, or like a hand, so who is, who is writing the, like, wh 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 when we take notes, yeah, the, the hand is writing, the pen is writing, right, but is it pen is writing, no, pen itself cannot write, and, and hand itself cannot write, it's actually your, your intellect is writing. So same is here. Yeah, the Moshe wrote uh, wrote her, but he was uh, very humble. Just uh, whatever, like like hand does not have its own opinion. So Moshe did not have his own opinion, right? So so and uh, if he would be would be like uh, would become angry, so it looks like Hashem is angry. So which is not uh, the case. So but let's go into details. Moshe was uh, was not speaking with a mass of common people, but rather. Of his individual on a high spiritual level, so he called his uh, rebels and stuff like that. So who this pro probably? I uh, guess this uh, um, most likely to the seventy elders, right, and other prominent people, maybe uh, heads of the tribes and stuff like that. Right? Our sages say so. It's it's not like uh, stupid people who do not understand. It's very very righteous people. Uh, only righteous people were uh, among these seventy sages. Our sages say that the lowest of the women uh, was on the level of prophets of Yehaskel, the son of Buzi. So when, when they were crossing the the, um, the Sea of Reeds, right, when, uh, when Hashem opened all of the seven heavens, as the Medrash says, right, and uh, all of them like saw like there is nobody there, nobody there, only on the throne of Hashem, whatever it means, right? And it says actually in Yehaskel, its first chapter, so I mean it's it's very very interesting. So that's how we know how the angels look like uh, from 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 this chapter and some Kiseya uh, Kovat and uh, some other things, right? So and uh, like from from all of the prophets that he has collected, the detail it more more completely, right? So he gives like a vivid picture for people who have uh, imagination, of course. Right, so and uh, in 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 the time of crossing of the sea, even the, the laws of the women, meaning the the slaves, or not slaves, but 
I'm not sure about a slave, maybe a slave woman, so she would have like even higher prophecy than is Haskell. So needless to say, so the, the comparison is like if they were on that level, the, this lady, like the lowest of the lady was on that prop, prop, uh, like uh, level. So needless to say, the highest, like uh, these uh, sages, what level they were, right? So that's uh, the comparison. And they would e evaluate everything Moshe said or did. So like, because why? He goes talk to God, right? He's very close to God, okay? So they were like... And they knew that he would not add anything uh, from his own uh, opinion. Okay. So whatever he did is according to Hashem. When they saw that he became angry, knowing that he was not among those who emotional qualities were impaired. So he, they know him, knew him as, as a perfect human being. Right. And uh, whatever he does is correct. It's his correct reaction to uh, whatever, whatever happens. They assumed that God had already become enraged against them uh, for asking for war, right? So they say most likely um, Moshe is just mir mirroring the, the, the attitude like uh, of Hashem toward us. That's it, right? He would not get angry at us. So it's because of the Hashem, right? And that they already in, um, incurred God's rage. So, so Hashem is angry at us. That's uh, and uh, through through Moshe. That's where we get in the message. For otherwise, Moshe would not have become angry, right? So he's uh, he loves Jewish people. Like if Hashem is not angry, why why Moshe would get angry, right? So that's uh, that's why it was a sin, right? Because Hashem was not angry with us. The, um, and this was not the case. For God did not show anger or rage. Even uh, even when speaking with him, so it's not like uh, um, the, like Hashem said, "Look, I'm very upset with them, I'm angry with them, but don't tell them, just uh, give the message." So like uh, like when when one leader would talk, lechavda, lechavda, right? So when a king would talk to his uh, to his uh, assistant, so he said, "I want to kill these people, but you know what? I don't want a rebellion in in my uh, kingdom. Let's let's try to to resolve a different way, right? Even though he's in, enraged." So it's not the case. Hashem was not in it. He merely said, take this stuff and give the war to the congregation in their flag. So Hashem said, look, what, what, what do they want? They want war? Okay, take your stuff. Yeah, get them war. Go, go do your job. Right? Since Moshe created a mistaken impression of God, uh, God's will, uh, it will uh, it considered a sin. So his uh, sin was, again, that uh, he created this impression that Hashem was angry with people for, uh, for asking for war. Okay, of course they ask improperly and this and that, but uh, Hashem was not angry uh, at them for this. Continue. Just one second, continue. This is departure from uh, contents of this chapter. It does, however, um, answer one of the questions many have asked with regard to the Torah. Many have... Uh, Many, many have discussed the issue and questioned what sin did Moshe committed. Compare our explanation of this passage with that of the others. Okay. The path of the truth will show you its way. So it's very interesting. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very famous question. What, uh, what Moshe did to, to, to deserve such a punishment? So let's see the commentary say perhaps Rambam was referring to interpretation of Rav Sadia Gaon in his commentary to the Torah of Rav Rabbeinu Hananiel. Okay, the commentary of Rambam. Okay, so we don't know what, what Rambam meant, but he said, look, I gave you the best explanation and uh, it's very, very unusual explanation, like, uh, but it's very deep and very, like, if you think about it, it's very truthful and interesting. <music>